every so often a game is released that synergizes the best features of several different games into an end product that is both somehow original and greater than the sum of its individual parts. Even though the component elements themselves are not original, it manages nevertheless to be an inspiring act of innovation. Well don't worry about that happening here, Rainbow Six Extraction is a typical tired old Ubisoft pseudo asset flip. What was anyone expecting? I'm serious, Rainbow Six Extraction is basically just Ubisoft looking at the recurring payment model of Rainbow Six Siege and thinking, I wonder if we can quickly figure out a way to make a single player co-op version of that game so we can fleece all the PvE players out of their pocket money too. Trigger warning. My skill set and advanced tactics in first person shooters is almost exclusively confined to scenarios and tactical engagements which involve me laying down in corridors with a light machine gun, spamming grenades and camping like it's my life's mission. Which it is. Sadly I'm not very good at this moving around stuff in video games and frankly leaning around a corner to aim always makes me think of exercise. So please brace yourselves for some fairly horrifying gameplay footage. Take some consolation that at least you didn't have to squad up with me. Hopefully. I will be completely upfront about this game. I initially went into this assuming this game would be atrocious and when I first started playing it I was actually surprised it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I shit ye not, I was psychologically bracing myself for that moment where I say, it's actually not as bad as I thought. But it's Ubisoft and they can always be relied to pull the cat out of the bag. Pull it out, strangle it, fuck it, attach some loot boxes and cosmetic items to it, put it back in the bag and then try and sell it to you for 80 quid. Then I discovered the full horror of the shop, the extent to which they prioritised weapon skins over gunplay and frankly environmental graphics, got to grips with the full scope of the horrific grind and then shrugged and cracked on with the job of criticising yet another half-assed, half-baked live service online shitshow shop, wasted opportunity Ubisoft game. So what is Rainbow Six Extraction? Well it's basically PvE Rainbow Six Siege with aliens and shit. In fact that's probably the best way to describe the art design too. It's basically Rainbow Six Siege with shit. Shit on the walls, shit on the floor and sometimes shit on you too. <coughs> And just like Rainbow Six Siege, the graphics look like they were done by someone last decade and stored in a warehouse somewhere between Half-Life 2 and Far Cry 3. You pick an operator, get a mission with three levels, a 15 minute timer for each and crack on with the job. You go on either solo or primarily in rando squad missions against the clock. You drop in, kill aliens, try not to trigger them and cause a bum rush do your busy work and get out in one piece. I got vague memories of grinding Lexington in the Division 1 if I'm honest. You want better gear and better operators so you grind. This is impeded by game mechanics and XP throttling and so the game loop goes around and around. You have a selection of operators and unlock more with progress. They can get injured and need to take time off for a little nap nap. They can almost get killed but not quite. Just as their health hits zero, this safety protocol triggers and they are immediately encased in spray cheese. Or possibly dick cheese. This preserves them to be rescued later, if you are stupid enough to keep playing. The mission levels have aliens which are conveniently encapsulated in neat little containment zones because game mechanics. You have to go in and do missions because video games. You unlock cosmetic items because monetization. You grind, grind, fucking grind because Ubisoft. You basically try and stealth against the clock, attempt to complete your mission both well and before the arbitrary 15 minute timer runs out, all the while trying not to trigger the aliens into cancelling you. The walls are covered in alien spaff and the spaff is periodically dotted with alien pus boils. The spaff 
sticks to your boots and slows you down. I've experienced that. And when the alien pus boils are triggered, they start ejaculating new alien cannon fodder that come and harass you. And just for good measure, the pustules will also spaff out more spaff. All the female operators look like Russian prostitutes. And frankly, most of the male operators look like they're pimps. One of the operators had camel toe. The entire art design looks like it was inspired by a snuff porn movie filmed on the set of Aliens by a director with an obsession about fungal diseases. I have no idea what they were all thinking. But this is Ubisoft. Apparently the aliens are fungus. No really, it's alien space fungus. Like bread mould, albeit less tasty I would imagine. Apparently it landed here on the Tunguska meteorite, was experimented on but escaped containment. Yeah, how about them apples? A pathogenic vector being studied by scientists, breaches containment and wreaks havoc on the world. That old chestnut. A principal feature of the alien parasite is the biofilm colloquially known as alien spaff. They jizz it up the walls and across the floor whenever they get excited. It's basically like a typical teenage boy. It's a bacterial cellular network with quantum properties that allows it to share nutrients and information across vast distances. It sounds a bit like the internet, only slightly less toxic but vastly inferior. I'm serious, I get all my nutrients and information from the internet and it doesn't require me to spaff everywhere. Although I'm not claiming that this is not sometimes a consequence of using the internet. The nice science lady said she was worried about these aliens evolving. Well, here are a couple of radical suggestions. They should possibly evolve to maybe not wait precisely 15 minutes to lose their shit. Evolve to climb over low garden walls and escape containment. Evolve to stamp on the spray cheese encrusted operators that are left lying all over the ground. Unless of course that yellow cheese is indestructible. In which case why aren't they using it to make our body armour? Rainbow Six Extraction felt a bit like Rainbow Six Siege crossed with the story of XCOM and the mission structure of Deep Rock Galactic. With all the joy, intelligence, purpose, agency and endgame removed and replaced by a digital cosmetic store. Functionality and fuckery. Right off the bat, it's a fucking shop. Really, it's a shop disguised as a video game, yet again. 9am day one the game launches with shop in the options. You can buy discounts and boosters, it's pay to fucking win. In fact, I was shocked to even see the boosters because nobody is going apeshit about it. Perhaps gamers are just fatigued from being constantly ripped off or they have other shit to deal with like organising online so they can get refunds for Battlefield 2040 fuck. But this game launched with XP boosters and barely anyone is talking about it. The one minor concession they have made so far is that at least some of the weapon skins are universal I think and can be used on every gun. But honestly, I think that was most likely done as a talking point for the press releases. But I will at least give them credit for doing one non-shitty thing with their shitty shop. Oh, and I haven't seen loot boxes yet. Yet. I'm not going to lie, as soon as I saw all this shit, I immediately realised that any hope I had that this game was not going to be a shitfest completely evaporated as did my desire to keep playing long enough to really master the game. The rebinding was actually pretty slick and effortless at first, however, for some reason it had issues with the default map button and it is categorically not a problem at my end. Basically it would only pull up the map if I tapped the tab key for a microsecond. Press it too slowly and it popped it up, then pulled it down again. I'm not sure what was causing the fluttering but I noted that when I rebound the key to M it worked fine, but hitting it a second time did not remove the map, so I had to hit escape to get rid of it. This is just basic clown car stuff and lack of compliance testing and precisely the sort of bug you get when you build a game for console 
without any fucks given about porting. I had one match entirely blown because my mouse button stopped working but suddenly sprang back into life the second I activated my extraction. I cannot stress enough I've had zero problems like this with any game I've played in three months. They also have the annoying hold to interact system that I'm seeing more and more in online games. I don't know whether this is part of the anti-cheat or just something to do with server latency but I've also seen it introduced in other online games like Fallout 76 and Battlefield's 2040 fuck. I don't know what is going on here but traditionally using interact used to just work. You just press it once. For some reason many new games are opting for a delayed hold system. So there is something mechanical going on behind the scenes here and I'm curious why the game is essentially giving the player a micro loading screen experience just to open a box, activate a door or trigger a fucking timer. The UI was a bit strange. On a strange scale of 1 to 10 where 1 was Tilda Swinton and 10 was Jeffrey Epstein I reckon I'd give it a 4 or 5. So a Sharia LaBeouf. Basically there were occasions where I just didn't know what the fuck to press. I clicked on the wrong thing and started queuing and there was absolutely no intuitive way to exit the queue. Escape didn't bring up any menu, there was nothing obvious to click and I ended up mashing Alt F4 just so I didn't face plant into someone else's match and ruin it for them by quitting. Similarly doing the tutorial there were moments where I struggled to navigate the game, it's just not very thoughtfully designed. There's a moment where the game just appears to freeze but it's actually a loading screen with no back out or visual timer. And this was a major fuck around for me. One misclick and suddenly you face plant into an irreversible queue cycle and all you can do is bend over and take it or hit Alt F4. I also had issues with completing the tutorial. It literally does not make it clear that you must extract from the third subzone at least once to complete from 87% to 100%. I think it would at least be polite of them to explain that. It's a fucking tutorial and I needed to google the issue to complete it and I wasn't alone. I'm sorry but if your tutorial isn't even self explanatory and easy to navigate then frankly you need a little tutorial to explain how the tutorial works. I mean fucking hell, it's not a helpful way to structure the allegedly helpful part of the game. You would not issue instructions for a hand grenade that says, pull out pin, release the handle, now please refer to subsection 3c on page 14 that you can find on the internet. As I've said before if your tutorial requires a tutorial you know you have fucked it up. I think this is doubly disgraceful because I've experienced this playing on two separate accounts. The second time I'd extracted from the third subzone already I had completed all the tasks and then had to go back and do a three subzone extraction for zero reason just to get the VR ticker to complete. And remember that in VR training you get zero points, zero XP, zero benefits so when I say you have to go and do a three zone mission for no reason I'm talking literally just fucking half an hour of your life down the shitter because some 17 year old intern who is in charge of coding at Ubisoft Canada can't unfuck the ticker after a month of complaints. Needless to say because it's a game that you can play entirely single player without ever going online to meet other people, without ever competing online which you might choose to just quietly play alone, on your own, on your own rig, without the requirement of being online it's obviously an always online live service game because modernity. Seriously you can't even start up the game without waiting for the server queue. Personally I also think the hit registration was slightly off. There were instances when shooting spores where after shooting the ones in front the ones behind clearly were not taking damage for a couple of seconds. Like the model in front of it had despawned but left the invisible hitbox there for a while longer. There were some spatial sound anomalies. I get the whole spooky noise builds atmosphere thing. I also get the whole using your ears to locate threats thing. What I don't get is the whole completely dislocated nonsense sound effects that make you look for a threat only there is nothing there 
because some random sound is coming out of the wall, because some tit in the sound design department thought it would be, and I paraphrase this, cool. In a Rainbow Six Siege analog kind of shooting game, shit has to be wired tight. If there is a sound effect, it has to link directly to a game mechanic or be contextually consistent or constant. You can't just throw in extra sound effects because they sound cool. It is heartening to know that this game has its fair share of Delta errors. Well, it wouldn't be a Ubisoft game if it didn't have Delta errors. Let's not forget that Ubisoft Melmo actually had to rename its fourth elite task force from ETF Delta to ETF Echo just to avoid endless memes and piss taking. I think it's safe to say that Delta errors are now part of Ubisoft's cultural history. The gunplay is not very good. The guns are pretty. Of course they were. They are there to sell skins later in the season, and that is a theme these days. 10% of the effort goes on the gun mechanics and 90% of the effort on making the guns look pretty because the guns are primarily there as a platform to sell weapon skins. For me the penny dropped when I tried to see my options for my pistol which had shitty tritium sights. Not that I've got anything against tritium sights, it's just these ones were bad. Whilst trying to put on a red dot or something I discovered that I had two options. One, taking off the default silencer or putting on a muzzle brake, which was dumb. Or two, putting on some Mardi Gras psychedelic paint scheme, which was dumberer. And I think this shows clearly where the long term ambition of this game lies. So two functional weapon attachments that affect gameplay and 37 different fucking weapon skins. So technically I was mistaken. 5.4% of the effort went on the guns. 94.6% of the effort went on the gun skins. Well that's clearly a victory of style over substance right there. Yeah, it's a live service Ubisoft game. Enough said. I wasn't really feeling it with the guns to be honest. Maybe it's because of the disconnect caused by only shooting fantasy alien targets. The shotgun naturally had the range of a water balloon because nobody at Ubisoft realises that shotguns have a range longer than the end of the table. I would personally love to see a bunch of Ubisoft employees trying to disarm a man with a shotgun. You just know that one of them would shout, don't worry he's got a shotgun, just stay at least five feet away from him and you'll be safe. The effective deadly range of shotguns in reality is well beyond 50 feet with buckshot, but thanks to the shotgun fallacy in this game they start to gas out at less than 20 feet. Let's give her a try. Same distance, same gun. Now I have to say from the shooter's perspective that looked like a bit of a tighter pattern at 50 yards. The world record for shot put is 76 feet and that is some bloke from Portland throwing a 16 pound iron ball through the air. So basically in Rainbow Six Extraction it would be more combat effective to take a Portlandian than a shotgun. Now that makes no sense on so many levels. A real problem is that most of the guns don't really feel or sound particularly distinct. Maybe on paper there are some huge technical differences on the spec sheets but for me only a couple stood out. I mean I am normally a bit of a gun nerd and I can usually get some measure of a gun from its sound effects and modelling but one time I was playing and thinking this gun is weak and kicks about and post match I discovered that it was an SMG and not an automatic rifle. I could not intuitively tell I was shooting a sub gun. Now that's not good. I'm going to assume that at some point in the development someone thought shit this is a stealth game at its core, let's quickly put the silencer sound effects on all the gun noises instead of actually doing the work on making distinct silenced gun reports for each gun which included distinct cycling actions and suppressed shooting sounds. I just wasn't feeling it with the gunplay and I could really use a decent shooter right now. I did like one of the LMGs though, but I always like LMGs. You don't have to reload them often and they're comfy to lie down with. So what is my overall take of 
Rainbow Six Extraction. I always like to ask the question, for what problem is this the solution? And to be fair, this one actually gets a more substantial response than most. Whenever any video game is released, there are certain questions that always get posed by the fans on Reddit. Can we have a zombie DLC? Can we have a PvE mode? Can you do it so we can play this game online with my mates? Can you make girls sexier like in the old video games? Well, I'm just going to jump in and say I actually agree with that question. And I am going to take a wild fucking punt that someone somewhere asked at some point, why can't we have a version of Rainbow Six Siege that is a fully fleshed out PvE game in its own right and not just a half-baked bot mode where I can also play with my mates? Although I'm still pretty sure the real question here was raised by Ubisoft and that question was how can we fleece PvE players the same way we do in Rainbow Six Siege? That is why this game exists. The gameplay is organised around a rotating roster of operators. I don't know, just seems like an artificial way to force people to circulate through different operators, possibly with a view to selling them in the future had the game actually taken off. Also having lots of operators means lots of microtransactions. Some of the equipment can be used by all operators, but certain things like supers and guns are unique to each one. Because you know, buying a second pump action shotgun for your team would just be too silly to contemplate. Basically they're trying to push people into the same kind of team composition, rock paper scissors gameplay of Rainbow Six Siege, but trust me, this is PvE. It's amazing what you can achieve with a team full of arsehats, all packing LMGs, auto turrets and a cheesing attitude. My favourite operator was obviously Ella. Anger is the hallmark of rebellion. I hated her main weapon and special skill. She also looked slightly gormless. However, she not only looked like a Russian prostitute, but dressed like one as well. And she had camel toe. So camel toe it was then. The tension is reasonably well established, the principal one being between the timer and the requirement for stealthy execution. It's an age old and well worn dynamic, but it works. You have lots of shit to do, there is lots of shit to clear and there is even shit on the walls. Doing it carefully and stealthily is pure win, but with only 15 minutes to complete each level, compromises have to be made mainly compromises between precision and safety. It's time versus quality of execution basically. The cascade effect does actually work. Basically the big red pustules pass out extra aliens when they're alerted. So if Camel Toe fucks up by dropping her makeup bag, alerts an alien who alerts the festering bee boss, suddenly the proverbial zit is now popped and you instantly have repeat respawns to deal with until you have found and eliminated the triggered zit. In a group of randos this can rapidly cascade into a full scale shit show where you are struggling to deal with the relentless enemy spawns, can't kill the spawners and more and more aliens show up, sometimes in the panic other aliens get arse pulled, more pustules are alerted and down the hill you slide. In a group of randos this can be achieved with only one clown. You don't need a whole clown show to fuck up the mission to the point where it descends into absolute farce, you run out of ammo and everyone shots it and runs. The game however has a problem with the general gameplay vibe in my opinion. It's hard to explain and highly subjective but here goes. People like games for different reasons and games are liked for different reasons. Very broadly speaking, lots of games share the following qualities. Hear me out, as strange as this all might sound. Valheim, Fallout New Vegas and Call of Duty Online Multiplayer do stuff in common from the perspective of the player. At different times, they can all be satisfying, exciting and occasionally stressful. This balance is very important for the enjoyment of the average player. It's like the balance between sugar, salt and fat in snacks and fast food. Ever wondered why Pringles are more addictive than meth? 
check the ingredients. Sugar, salt and fat. It's a holy trinity. Similarly, video games, if they're going to have universal appeal, generally have to balance satisfaction, excitement and stress. All those three games can be satisfying. When you built your little sex palace in Valheim, you've just unlocked some new swanky player housing in New Vegas above a brothel, you've unlocked some new widget for your steampunk gun in Call of Duty, albeit a gun designed by a pacifist. Similarly, all three games can routinely be exciting. When the gameplay cranks up and things start getting wild and you get sucked into what's going on. At times they can all be stressful when the odds are high enough, during a boss fight in Valheim or when you're far from home and in danger, sneaking around Cazadors or Deathclaws in New Vegas or trying to cap a specific difficult achievement in Call of Duty. They all balance these factors but mostly they are satisfying, exciting and occasionally stressful, weighted in that order. Here is my problem with Rainbow Six Extraction. It's primarily stressful, it's not very exciting and it's rarely, if ever, satisfying. There is not much fat, barely any sugar, you just get a big mouthful of salt. In fact, it's mostly just stress punctuated with fury because playing solo you spend most of your time trying not to fuck up the mission, but playing with randos you spend most of your time watching someone else fuck it up. Imagine a long stealth mission in a video game that you've played where one mistake might fuck it all up for you, it's long, slightly tedious, stressful and you finally complete it, you breathe a big sigh of relief and think well I'm glad that's over. Now imagine that same mission, only now that stealth mission is stretched out into a whole game. You have to do a selection of missions in a selection of locations over and over, but it's still basically the same stealth mission. They added a clock just to make it less enjoyable, you can join missions with randos, one of whom is almost guaranteed to be an outlier fail case, and the best possible outcome is that you unlock a new weapon skin or woolly hat for camel toe. It's just not satisfying, and since you spend most of your time trying not to fuck it up, it's kind of stress oriented gameplay. Like most exciting things in life you deal with the stress because of the payoff, this game doesn't have a payoff. It felt a bit like being a volunteer catching poisonous snakes that people were releasing on purpose and if you succeed the best possible outcome is that they send you off to a bigger house with bigger snakes. I just did not see the point of the gameplay loop or even get a sense of achievement or accomplishment. Invest time, effort, get stressed out, rinse and repeat, win a gonk. Valheim is satisfying because despite the tense moments you get to build and explore, Fallout New Vegas is satisfying because despite the tense moments you get to advance the plot, improve your character and explore. Call of Duty multiplayer is satisfying when you lay down in a corridor with an LMG and infrared scope and camp while spamming smoke grenades. Rainbow Six Extraction is basically all work and not much payoff, unless of course you play video games solely for the purpose of collecting cosmetic items in the most unpleasant way possible. It's really hard to nail down the issue here, but the game feels a bit more like trying to carry a tray with too many drinks on it, rather than you actively engaging an enemy. But you also don't get the enjoyment and emotional tension of a true stealth game. Imagine a Call of Duty mission where you have to complete the thing balancing a book on your head and you can't make any noise either and the guy standing next to you might drop his canteen on the fucking floor at any moment. Yeah, it's not a recipe precisely aligned with my idea of fun. Fair play to them though for the backstory. They clearly did some serious work meshing the game dynamics into the bullshit backstory in an attempt to justify why we're going into dangerous hot zones overrun with alien spaff lords, yet somehow our maintenance guys can amble in there and set up airlocks and containment doors and I assume repair the false walls and furniture so we can smash it all up when we come back to visit next Thursday. I guess what I'm saying is that the premise largely makes no sense, but at least they put some time and serious effort into trying to justify this nonsense and try and tie it into what could be tenuously referred to as a plot. There was just a weird juxtaposition between the alleged purpose of our missions 
and the fact that we clearly had enough control over the situation to install infrastructure, airlocks, security controls and doors at will. If we can do all of that, why not send in robots with tasers to do the missions? Why not just use a fucking crane and lower robot arms into position to take samples and bonk the aliens on the head? Why not install Gatling guns all the way around the perimeter? Why not lower in massive aquavacs to suck away all the alien spaff? In fact, why are we going in there at all? I'll tell you why. Because the game idea was developed and probably well down the road of completion and then at the last minute they quickly dragged in a bunch of story writers who somehow had to come up with a story and plot that somehow made sense of all of this game's systems. Credit to them, they did a pretty good job of trying to explain all of this nonsense. But sadly you can't put lipstick on a pig. Well, not strictly true, but that's a story for another day. My point is the writers were never going to be able to make sense of a scenario that makes no scientific, physical or logical sense. We have to go in on foot because that's the game's design and they did their very very best to try and explain why that was not a stupid fucking idea. But it is a very very stupid idea indeed. In a weird way it reminded me of a fairground horror ride in as much as it might give you the odd jump scare, but fucking hell, you're on a fairground ride so you intrinsically know you're not in a haunted house and you're not in danger. Yeah, Rainbow Six Extraction is essentially an alien invasion fairground ride where they are always trying to sell you candy floss and those glowing necklaces that the poor kids don't realise will stop glowing about two hours after they get home. The problem with the entire premise is the premise. Everything is arbitrarily designed in order to wrap the story around what is basically a 15 minute per level, 3 level, PvE match setup. Apparently it's the aliens doing the invading yet we have neatly compartmentalised everything into neat precise levels, installed airlocks and persuaded the bad guys to adhere to a strict and punctual 15 minute time limit. Oh, and the aliens have kindly agreed not to stamp on Camel Toe's head if she gets encased in high tech dick cheese. I would note that I got the slight impression that maybe they were trying to cash in on what Deep Rock Galactic are doing. That's a mission based single player or co-op objective based FPS combat game. Maybe Ubisoft looked at Deep Rock Galactic and thought we can rustle up some of that magic whilst failing to appreciate that DRG is wonderful for many other reasons well beyond the scope of the exact mission structure. This is speculation but I strongly suspect Deep Rock Galactic was probably mentioned in at least a few development meetings. The game is obsessed with microtransactions and skins. Even more bizarrely they are almost exclusively shit and silly. I am not really what you would describe as an expert on real life tactical loadouts. My idea of tactical loadouts is putting molly and camo paint on my mobility scooter and watching Generation Kill whilst chugging beer and pizza. But I know enough to say with authority that these outfits are fucking ludicrous. What part of dressing up in bear skins makes sense during an alien incursion? Are you trying to confuse the aliens by making them think you're a giant 500 pound deadly predator? Because I don't think that will get them to leave you alone. The tactical skank outfit might work though. I don't think anyone will want to go near that, alien or human. These outfits are just stupid, just silly. It's like they nicked their ideas from cosplay conventions or possibly TikTok. Roll up, roll up, spend some money and dress like a fucking idiot. Shit is not wired tight in this game and this is a big problem for a game like this. Rainbow Six Extraction is trying to be a technical, no BS tactical shooter so it needs to prosecute that plan only and perfectly. And this part I think they fucked up. Enemy sounds should be precise cues. So don't throw in random sound effects for atmosphere. Hit registration should be spot on 9am day one. And it's not I don't think. Gun sound should be precise and distinct enough so you can tell 
who is firing and what they are firing. Loads of shit didn't work at launch, like some interactions and doing certain stuff crashed the game. If you are making an atmospheric RPG, people will be tolerant if the mechanics are a bit loose. But in a game like this, you have to get that shit spot on. There is a perverse sense of perfectionism in the game. Don't worry, that statement has nothing to do with me. I'm just noting that watching some high-end guides and tutorials, it was very clear that some players with more patience, skill, tenacity and sobriety than me clearly obsessed about developing their skill set to the point where they can dominate the mission solo on the highest difficulty settings. It's important to note that some players clearly are happier than pigs in shit and love the challenge. The game design does not work well with randos and therefore they have a big problem here when it comes to matchmaking. The cascade effect of the game mechanics means that problems can lead to more problems. Fail to take out nests whilst alerting aliens and very quickly a mistake or two can cascade into an overwhelming bum rush of constantly respawning enemies. Now introduce randos. What could possibly go wrong? You can control and coordinate if you are solo or playing with your mates, but this mission structure combined with randoms in groups is a fucking excellent way to get very angry and frustrated incredibly quickly. You see matchmaking in FPS games generally works because for every arsehole on your team there is usually an arsehole on the other. As an arsehole I can speak with authority. Due to the law of arsehole averages in video games, matchmaking works out most of the time, pitching the equivalent amounts of arseholes against each other. But in hair trigger, semi stealth, high coordination PvE mission play, well then just one clueless fuckwit can ruin it for everyone, turning a systematic stealth mission into a finely orchestrated catastrophe. Imagine a covert special ops stealth recon mission into an enemy stronghold, where one mistake could trigger the alarms and bring a whole garrison down on your heads. But one guy shows up pissed in fluorescent work overalls, wearing fucking clogs and a cowbell. Well I did a matchmaking mission like that and I can tell you that it's funny the first time, just the first time. It gets really unfunny very quickly. And sadly there's only so much you can do of this game solo, so if you really want to play the game to its fullest, you are either going to have to get so good you can carry the whole team, or accept that a lot of your operators might end up sleeping it off in hospital or going missing in action. And from what I can gather, all weekly challenges demand co-op play to complete. Personally think they totally missed a trick with the Archeans. FYI, the Archeans are the alien spaff monkeys. Remember how I said every time a video game is released there are certain questions that always get asked? Well here is another one. Why can't I play as the bad guys? Seriously, I can't believe they missed that trick. Allowing players to jump in as an alien in someone else's co-op match would be a blast. Think Alien vs Predator or Deathloop. I'm not sure how well it would work out, but being able to opt in as an alien would be hilarious and no doubt people's comments screeching about that option will be rapidly scrubbed out of existence on the subreddit once players realise that this is the next evolution of the game. So what about the community? I would note that this game seems to be well on its way to being dead already. The subreddit only has 15,000 members, Battlefield 2042 subreddit has 200,000 members. To put this in perspective, a couple of hundred thousand people signed the petition demanding a refund from EA for Battlefield 2042. That's an interesting statistic really. Rainbow Six Extraction has a fraction of the number of Redditors that Battlefield 2042 has pissed off customers. I'm still trying to wrap my head around what that means, but it's most likely a damning indictment of both games. Ubisoft is boasting 3 million players, but I'm not feeling it. Currently, and until such time as they shit can their very shit launcher, there are no Steam stats for their games, but I will note this. This game had a monumental and rapid collapse on Twitch. Within a month it dropped below rank 250. I just checked the subreddit and the newest post was over an hour ago. 
Maybe they pre-vet all posts because they're forum Nazis, but even so, the maths looks odd. The last 10 posts were made over approximately the last 8 hours, and the third highest post out of those is an advert for Squarespace. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? Most of the recent posts have between 2 and 0 upvotes. It certainly looks like an internet ghost town, so it makes me wonder where Ubisoft are getting their stats from. Given this game was on Uplay Plus Game Pass and you could play it for free on EA Game Pass, because <coughs> Ubisoft is being bought out soon, but to me at least, I think a lot of this supposed 3 million players are casuals who dipped their toe in because they could play it for free, did a few matches and then fucked off. Although it's not impossible that Ubisoft is just lying about those 3 million players. I would note that whilst checking out the subreddit and the official forum it was the usual shitshow of fanboys and sock puppets. You know the drill, fuckheads pleading for new cosmetic outfits, entirely unamusing memes and people seizing every opportunity to slurp and gurgle about how wonderful everything is. Half of these comments were most likely written by moderators and community managers using smurf accounts. That was certainly the conclusion I came to judging by the quality of the shit jokes. Conspicuously I struggled to find anyone making general complaints about the game. Critical bug specific posts are seemingly staying up from what I can see, but I seriously couldn't find anyone just splurging out a Rainbow Six Extraction is shit or dead game comment. I guess it's safe to say that all channels are being sanitised and astroturfed because there is always someone who makes a post like that, every day. Seriously, the official forums reads like a group sing-song in a mental hospital a couple of hours after the daily dose of happy pills have been dished out. And I'm speaking from personal experience, it's nauseatingly happy talk about how wonderful everything is and how nice it would be if there were more pointless things in the shop to buy. It's invasion of the body snatchers levels of sinister and creepy. Funny though, the internet in general is awash with negative reviews and comments, but strangely it's a giant fucking love fest on official comms. I'm going to take a wild punt that complaining on the official Rainbow Six Extraction Discord will be rewarded with an instantaneous life ban, because that's precisely what happened with the Division 2 Discord. I would note that I have not managed to record any footage of other players screeching abuse at me. Admittedly, I didn't play many co-op matches with randos, but even so, I was really hoping for some cheap jokes at the expense of random abusive screechers. Sadly, however, they were either universally silent or VoIP is broken. When evaluating a video game, it's critically important to weigh up and balance all the pros and cons and ensure the relative merits are not obscured by negative issues that might be more prominent yet less significant to the overall enjoyment of the player. Not something I had to worry about here, Rainbow Six Extraction is a bit shit, plain and simple. I can see why it seemed like a good idea, making a co-op PvE version of Rainbow Six Siege, but I've had lots of good ideas that all turned out shit too. Making a spaceship in my back garden, gluing coasters onto the bottom of my plastic beakers so I never spill anything, trying to bleach my hair with toilet cleaner, and promising to review this game. All these concepts seemed like a good idea at the time, but turned out to be a fucking disaster. Just like this game. Had it been executed by a different developer, it might have worked out differently. Had it been executed by the same developers with different managers, it might have worked out differently. Had there been a better progression tree, it might have been more interesting, but there is nothing here apart from the tedious grind and a shop. I do think it may well develop a small, extremely hardcore niche audience, a bit like pony play. Not many people are into it, but those that are will be universally fanatical. I shoot you not whether this game completely collapses or not because of its peculiarly uptight and perfectionist style, I think it will always have a small fanatical following, many of whom will no doubt show up in the comments section and tell me to eat a dick or ask me if I've ever considered dressing up like a horse. 
Talking of pony play and furries and all their many guises, I never thought I would ever find myself in complete agreement with Polygon about anything. But on this occasion, they nailed it. Rainbow Six Extraction is all grind and no payoff. Like an RPG that only has side quests. Please don't read too much into that agreement. I'm only agreeing with the headline and I promise not to make a habit of it. Unless I end up getting into pony play and need to find some like-minded freaks. This video is essentially the video game review equivalent of a sympathy fuck. If I had not already promised to review this game I would have stopped playing after two hours. As it was, I forced myself to go through the motions and try and failed to level up at least a couple of operators out of a sense of duty. Perhaps it was negligent of me not to have played for 100 hours before opening my fat trap and spewing forth a cynical tirade. However in my defence I know of no game that was shit for the first hour, shit for the next 5 hours, shit for 5 hours after that, then miraculously at some point transformed like a butterfly from a chrysalis into a wondrous thing of beauty. Games rarely if ever do a 180 degree flip on the player and if they do it never happens after the 20 to 50 hour mark. I personally didn't like Fallout 3 at first and I tried multiple times to get into that but at no point did I think it was shit and unenjoyable to play and despite having multiple full starts each session was only a few hours and it was less than a grand total of 10 hours before it transformed into one of my favourite games of all time. But with Extraction I can honestly say I knew where all of this was going right from the start and if I had played just those two hours and then written the review I don't think the review would have been significantly different. This is a gameplay loop that is turning on a dime and trust me the character XP levelling is throttled to fuck unless you are playing Dust Till Dawn 7 days a week you will likely not even put a fucking dent into a lot of your operator's progression. But that right there is the grand plan I guess. The problem is that you know where you're at, what the drill is and exactly where this is all heading. You will endlessly rinse and repeat a set of maps with a set of operators, unlock gonks, gadgets and guns so you can indefinitely recycle the same content in an endless loop which gets progressively harder that requires progressively more unlocked kit, more gonks, ad infinitum until at some point Ubisoft releases some new content to alleviate the crushing boredom and they will no doubt charge you for that DLC. It's like running on a hamster wheel for the sole purpose of earning enough points to get a slightly stiffer hamster wheel and to get fit enough to be able to use it properly until your owner eventually comes in and offers you an even better hamster wheel with better paint on it that's even stiffer which you have to pay to run on. It's video game playing for its own sake. There is no grand payoff. There is nothing creative in either the design or for the player to do. You can Google the law and be done with it. I don't think they're going to be making any movies about this game. Although knowing Ubisoft, <laughs> they'll make a movie about anything. It's basically Rainbow Six Siege for people that don't like aimbotters or toxic little shits screeching at them. Although admittedly, now I've said it, those last two things are valid unique selling points in my humble opinion. My issues with Rainbow Six Extraction are twofold. Firstly the in-game shop and how this game is primed for monetization and potential NFTs is horrific. 37 weapon skins and 2 weapon mods is a piss take. Secondly, it's not very good. It's not absolutely appalling. It runs okay enough and has a couple of good ideas, it's just not very good. Now in isolation it's not the end of the world if a video game isn't very good but in context it is because the world is not experiencing a shortage of Ubisoft games that aren't very good. Nobody is running up and down the halls of power shouting that they've run out of subpar below average Ubisoft games and they need some more in a hurry. What you make of this game will be in part determined by what style of gameplay you enjoy, why you are playing and your psychological makeup and possibly also to a degree if you have a reliable supply of mates to do co-op with effectively and with good communications. I found it unpleasant across the spectrum, read into that what you will. 
However, if you're someone frequently described as a perfectionist, overly competitive, a completionist, obsessive, a fan of pointless challenges and microtransactions, and you have some like-minded mates, then Rainbow Six Extraction will tick all the boxes and all the endless weapon and character skins to unlock will just magnify that OCD glee. Rainbow Six Extraction is like doing a tough mission in the Division 1. Ok, I'll rephrase that. Rainbow Six Extraction is like the Division 1 where they removed the whole city and just left the missions. Instead of roaming around doing stuff and occasionally going into a mission, it's just mission mission fucking mission. Teleport in, sneak around, have a rando trigger the pustules, get annoyed, wipe, maybe unlock a new gonk, question your sanity and feel pissed off that Camel Toe got covered in spray cheese and resign yourself for going in again with another Russian prostitute until Camel Toe gets rescued. It's the Division without the city, it's XCOM without the strategy, it's Rainbow Six Siege without the enemy team. It's a giant shop with very little incentive to play apart from the dress up Barbie. But at least they do give you lots and lots of Barbie dolls to play with. Well, Russian prostitutes. But for now, good luck and happy hunting.